Greetings and welcome to this edition of Practical Assertion. This is the beginning of year two as last week marked our one year anniversary. For all of you loyal viewers or readers, we thank you for your interest and for sharing our message. This week, I'd like to discuss briefly the predicament that many have faced or will face as we grow older. There comes a time when we need items or accommodations that require more money than we have at the time. Whether it is a car, an apartment, a house, or some appliance, we need it, but are just a little short at the moment. Anybody out there in practical assertion land know what I'm talking about? So, without the full amount, we began to look at our options, which fall into three categories, for rent, for lease, or for sale. I know some of you may be thinking that there is another option, you know, the five finger discount option, but I hope not. Anyway, back to the topic. Just this week, in fact, my car needed some major repairs, and for the record, my car has 418,000 miles on it, and you know what? Some things are supposed to break. And I had a very important lunch engagement, and the wife needed to help the kiddos with all their running around, etc. so I rented a car. I couldn't afford to buy a new car, so down to the rental car place I went. Many of you may be in an, an apartment that you make regular, uh, sometimes irregular payments on, right? <laughs> and still others of you might have opted to lease either a dwelling or a vehicle. As I thought about this idea of renting, leasing, or purchasing outright, and as always, trying to make practical application in an effort to offer a perspective for our viewers, it occurred to me that there is a powerful analogy to be made. You see, each one of these options, rent, lease, or purchase, represents a different level of commitment. Some of you are probably thinking, hmm, I never thought about it that way. I see where you're going with this. Good, so let's get into it then. For those of you who have ever rented an apartment, you know that you typically sign a rental contract for one year. This contract for one year sets in place your requirements as a renter and your obligations. An inspection is made prior to your move in and it is expected that you will leave the apartment in the same shape upon moving out. As you approach the end of your contract, you have a decision to make give notice of your intent to not renew, renew the contract, or go month to month. If renting a car, the process is still the same as you indicate the length of time that you need the vehicle and you sign a contract that covers the requirements that you agree to, such as returning it with the same amount of gasoline, the condition of the vehicle, etc. You know, you walk around the vehicle and make note of any damage, dings, or cracks in the windshield so that you are not charged for someone else's carelessness. If leasing, the same process takes place. However, leases are typically for longer periods of time. At the end of the rental or lease period, you vacate in the case of an apartment or return the property. In most cases, at the end of the lease, you may have an option to buy the property. Purchasing, on the other hand, calls for your total buy-in, excuse the pun. The commitment is somewhere around 15 to 30 years and at the end of the contract period, you own said property. How does this relate to your relationship, you ask? Well, as it relates to your current relationship, would you say that you are renting, leasing, or buying? As you consider both the renting and leasing scenarios, is it not clear that these two options are not commitments, but convenience? This is even seen as you reflect back on your care of those things that you rent or lease. Whether a car, an apartment, house, or tool, when we rent or lease, we usually exercise less care because quite frankly, there is little to no attachment. It is simply a convenience. We drive those rental cars like taxi drivers and like the police drive their company issued vehicles. When we make the conscious decision to purchase, on the other hand, we immediately make the emotional attachment or connection and we normally take better care of our house. And don't forget, in the sale, we committed up front to a lengthy stay. So, if in your current relationship, you are not experiencing the care, perhaps you are being rented or leased. This would explain the lack of attention, the poor maintenance and upkeep. Are you on a month to month basis? <laughs> Let me also suggest that for those of you who are in a lease, while it may not be as bad as a rental contract, it is still not a firm commitment. This is how I see it. What do you think? My blog page, my Facebook page, my Twitter feed ought to be blowing up after this discussion. I really want to hear from you. If you have a friend, a friend in either of the rental or lease arrangements, 
Let me hear from you and don't forget to forward this video to everyone you know. And we'll see you next week for another edition of Practical Assertion. And did I fail to mention the sublease agreements? You know, where you bring someone else in. Mm, that's just something for you to consider. Well, I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Goodbye.